Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have the utmost honor to interview Mr. Roberto Croci, past director at Microsoft for Startups in the Middle East and Africa, and currently at the Public Investment Fund in Saudi Arabia. Mr. Croci, could you talk a little bit more about yourself? Absolutely. Uh, Jeline, thank you so much for, for having me today. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to, to support. Uh, listen, about myself, yes, you, you mentioned a few of, of the roles I've taken recently. I've been uh, you know, in the region, in the Middle East and Africa for quite a long time. Um, across uh, different companies, I've been uh, uh, you know, a long time with Google and I moved uh, uh, with Google, I moved, uh, you know, to, to, to Dubai um, uh, some time ago uh, to, to, to develop, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the platforms, uh, business and analytics business across, across the region. And, and, um, and then I moved to Microsoft uh, uh, to set up the new division that Microsoft was launching uh, uh, for startups and venture capital across Middle East and Africa. So I, I, I set up the whole uh, function there, uh, you know, building the partnerships and programs for, uh, for Microsoft to support entrepreneurs, founders across the region. And, <clears throat> you know, identifying which, which programs make sense. And they set up some partnerships as well at government level to, to make sure we had enough uh, you know, um, um, uh, skin in the game as well, uh, in, you know, in the region to to support the development of, of founders and startups and their startups, uh, of course, uh, regionally. Um, and more recently, I joined the, the Public Investment Fund in Saudi Arabia um, uh, in a role where I'm uh, driving the, the transformation office, which is all about um, um, enabling more value creation and synergies across portfolio companies um, uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, the fund. And, and so I have a chance to um, work across all the different sectors, right, that the PIF is working uh, on, which is part, of course, of the South Division 2030, and uh, identifying ways where, you know, portfolio companies can, can uh, realize more synergies and more value by, create more value by working, you know, together and uh, across a variety of different initiatives. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so wonderful, which actually leads into my first question for you. What do you think is so unique about Saudi to entrepreneurs and VC companies? Uh, there are a bunch of things that I think are pretty unique to Saudi, right? So first of all, I, in my opinion, it starts with the vision. So Saudi Vision 2030 is something really unique in the sense that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, from the very top, um, there is this um, desire and willingness to transform the country, which starts, of course, with diversifying the economy from oil to a more knowledge-based economy, if you want, but also it entails as well to uh, reimagine or redesign or restructure right? so the sectors uh, the, the, that make the economy. And, 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 and of course, it, there's also a, a component of um, transforming the, 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 the country, an entire country, from a, a cultural perspective, right? So, Mm -hmm. considering all the legacy and the history from where Saudi is coming from before, uh, right? So, so all of this is exciting and I think it's pretty unique in the sense that if you combine this with the demographics of the country, right? So uh, you have a very, very young population, more than 70% is below 35 years old. The average age is uh, below, than, below 27, if I'm not mistaken, right? So, uh, you know, th th there, is, there is a huge potential. Uh, uh, you know, and, and probably it's it's all what's going on and, and the number of developments and things that are happening in Saudi right now, all at the same time is unprecedented in a way where, you know, they provide a, a lot of opportunities for for people to, to be more entrepreneurial, right? Because um, whenever you have moving parts and frictions and, and, and an entire economy in this case that is shifting across all the sectors, there are there are many opportunities for for not just for this ratio, but there are many opportunities for development, for uh, for uh, for young people to step in and uh, you know uh, be more entrepreneurial um, in the way they look at at work and the future of work and the future of their own country. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, and I was actually looking at your LinkedIn page a while back, and I saw that you are going to be attending the Future Innovation Summit in the UAE. Uh, what are you hoping to achieve at that? Um. I, I think there were just a few seconds, uh, a few seconds delay. Um, so you were asking uh, what I'm going, what I'm hoping to achieve from the, attending the Future Innovation Summit. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would uh, like to? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, um, it's always, um, it's not the first time I'm, I'm, I'm attending as a speaker this specific event. I think uh, it's always um, 
important, uh, uh, right? So to um, join conversations where uh, uh, it's about inspiring, uh, uh, you know, uh, about the future and talking about in innovation. Um, the region we are in, I think we are blessed um, living in this part of the world because there are, for, for, for a number of reasons, there is a convergence of, of, of things uh, where a, a, a lot of innovation is happening, right? So, um, and uh, across different sectors. So there is, there is um, uh, definitely uh, uh, abundance of uh, support and government um, intervention to make sure that the resources are in place, uh, you know, right? So to, to diversify economy and to uh, push more and more to attract talent to this region, to retain talent in the region, to work on innovation, to diversify the economies, right? So I think it's it's important to be part of the conversation. So uh, uh, for me, myself, what, I, what, I, what I'm aiming to achieve is just, you know, inspiring, uh, inspiring more people to, uh, to learn more about uh, technology, to learn more about uh, innovation and to, um, you know, uh, to to be more, to be very intentional on the call to action, right? So what, what can we do collectively in the region to, to drive a number of things forward? So these forums uh, and platforms, I think, are, are great, uh, right? So to have this conversation and then uh, to have, uh, you know, to, to shape shared agendas on how we can drive uh, economy and innovation even further across Middle East and Africa. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I hope you enjoy the conference when you attend it um, later. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And in the same topic, I feel like you attend a lot of events that are about educating people and especially young people. I'm just curious, is that your way of investing in society in some form? Um, that's that's a that's a great question. Um, I think I think uh, um, you know, uh, youth in general comes with uh, um, uh, this this concept of hope, right? So. Um, and and at some point, uh, for me, is 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 a way of, also of, of giving back, right? So I've been uh, uh, like many others. I mean, exposed to a number of situations, experiences where, um, it, you know, it's not just for myself. Is is the more uh, I can also contribute to uh, uh, help, uh, you know, younger generations or uh, youth or young people to, you know, look at the future and and inspire them to to action, right? So and to take action, to take ownership and responsibility of things. Um, I, I think is is just uh, something uh, uh, great to do because at the end of the day is, is the legacy we want to leave behind, right? So and and of course, uh, youth come with uh, fresh perspectives, comes with uh, you know uh, less of a legacy of things where um, uh, you know there are, there are so many uh, problems uh, that we are facing as a society today that we need the young generation to challenge sometimes the status quo. We need the young generation to come in with the right energy. And willingness to mm -hmm. to change things or to implement things, right? So that and to focus on the right things as well uh, that we need as a society to to fix, to change, to 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 build on, right? So so for me is 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 uh, personally is a, is a way of 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 giving back, uh, you know, experience I might have got without pretending, of course, to always have the the the, the right answers, right? So, uh, but also. Uh, uh, you know, inspiring these people, I think, is 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 uh, there, there is a component of, of satisfaction because you see, uh, you know, that uh, uh, there is hope and there is there is there are uh, you know uh, uh, young resources, young people that uh, are are willing to, to to take on challenges and and face problems and 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 find solutions for those. Right. So, I think I think uh, uh, young people what they need is. One is the opportunity, of course, to 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 face that, but also they need sort of an inspiration and guidance on, uh, you know, uh, learning from people that have been maybe uh, in those journeys early on, uh, you know, how they can step in and 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 take leadership and and take ownership of um, making things happen, right? So so um, I think we're at a point in time where uh, you know across many dimensions, right? So from climate change, financial literacy, financial inclusion in our region, for example, is is a big thing, and and uh, the future of work uh, and and many other things, right? So how how uh, these things can be reimagined, reinvented? We 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 really need the youth to step in and uh, come with energy and 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 willingness to uh, fall in love with these problems, if you if you allow me to say, and uh, and 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 uh, you know uh, put this energy to work in in, in the right way. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was a wonderful answer. And um, since those are all things that you know young people can bring to the table for the world, what do you think they can gain from all this experience? 
Uh, listen, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is always, I mean, there, there, is, there is a lot of value in, in, in the experience, right? So is, is um, uh, the fact that there is a support network around of, uh, uh, you know, for, for younger generation, right? So to, to either get inspiration from or um, to get advice on how to uh, look at things, right? So I think it can just uh, uh, fast track uh, you know their journey, the, the journey of young people when when they are trying to say, hey, uh, how can we be leaders of of tomorrow, right? So how can we really take ownership in a casual sense, so that when things go wrong, people are still around to help, and and how can we look at things uh, from a sense of purpose, right? So um, in, in order to uh, make sure that uh, you know. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a constant evolution, right? So you see, many things are 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 always changing, right? So, but there there are some fundamental things that us as human beings are 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 always the same at, at the end of the day, right? So, so um, I think what what young generation can gain from from uh, you know access to mentorship, access to uh, uh, people with with more experiences, uh, you know how how they can really, uh, you know take consciousness of, uh, you know, the, their role in society and the fact that we need young people to step in and try and, and spend more time in focusing on the right problems, um, uh, uh, try to infuse, uh, you know, sense of purpose in brands and businesses, right? So, because we really need a, a more uh, of that going forward. And, and, um, and, and young generation can can still uh, you know learn f you know from the advice of, of people that have been through a lot of experiences on how to to make those things happen right so so I think it's it's important to have this cross generational sharing of knowledge of information uh, and and um, because because it, it, you know a, a number of the things that we we need to do probably going forward requires challenging the status quo requires uh, looking at things from fresh perspectives that doesn't mean that the previous world the previous experience is not relevant uh, but that means that we we really need to uh, understand how to approach uh, and engage uh, the new generations in a way that they can really contribute to the development of uh, uh, the world and, and uh, you know, the economy in general. Mm -hmm. That's definitely true. Uh, I was watching one of your videos for Startups Without Borders, and one of the first things you talked about is the importance of people and making connections. But what do you think are some barriers between Gen Z and their potential network, and how do you think we can overcome those barriers? Uh, that's a brilliant question, right? So because uh, when we refer to Gen Z, it's like sometimes there is a disconnect, right? So there, there has been this narrative, uh, um, in, in especially uh, driven by, I would say, from, from, from the US, but it applies to many other countries where we have been hearing, especially after COVID, about the great resignation, right? So people quite quitting, uh, you know, their jobs because either they were not aligned with the with the values, the purpose, or the way of working for their employers, and so on and so forth. But I think it starts, this great resignation, it, there is a step before that. And it starts with what I would call the great disconnect. So I believe that there is a, dis a big disconnect within organization from what we refer to as leadership of, of these companies and what we refer to as the workforce. And there is a great disconnect because sometimes you see people are not following because either they're not inspired or, uh, or uh, they, they, they are not treated or considered as, as at the same level as human beings, right? So at the end of the day, uh, as you mentioned, uh, what, what I referred to uh, probably in that, in that speech was or conversation was, it starts from the fact that there should be a human dimension to, uh, to work that sometimes is even forgotten, right? So, or uh, it's not really uh, taken into consideration from from many companies right so uh, but but we are human beings and 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 we need to bring our own self to work right so there should be so the the the, the, the job of leadership should be that of building an, an an inclusive environment where people can really thrive and 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 because you know the ultimate you know uh, upside is that you would even get discretionary efforts from people that you know when they feel that the uh, you know they are they are treated as human that they are considered for who they are and they can really bring their perspectives and they can even disagree right so with certain with certain ideas the problem is that this is going to come because um, a, a, you know a number of companies have uh, you know they don't have the right leadership in place and and um, you know so this disconnect starts being a, a big uh, you know create frictions within the organizations and. Um, and uh, you know it requires a lot of alignment uh, on 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 the purpose of
on on how to create environments where people would feel safe and and uh, excited uh, to to work about because they feel they contribute to something right so they feel that they their work is meaningful they feel that they have an impact uh, for what they do and and so they are excited by by what they do and 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 the disconnect starts because uh, you know leadership is not listening and leadership doesn't have a voice most of the times or a lot of times and and new generations are are more uh, about uh, you know identifying brands with with a purpose identifying brands with with values and 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 and, and, and so when when they see that this is missing that there is a big disconnect right so um at the same time i believe that uh, new generation gen z should be also be humble in the way of there are still certain basics or foundational things that you need to learn right so in order to um uh, to be able to uh to get to a certain level within an organization right so so, so uh, experience is still of course relevant so how can you equip and enable the new generation right so uh, um uh to be able to uh, to leave a mark to be able to understand the gaps that they might have and uh, step in and and fill those gaps and take ownership of their own career of their own journey and and at the same time uh, you know bring their perspective in and and you know so that that's 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 the disconnect that's where i believe that uh, a lot of companies are not there yet today and it's a matter of uh, you know it starts with the culture of these companies right so and how leadership is driving the culture and the behaviors and mindsets. Uh, because when we talk about culture, there is a visible part, which is the behaviors. And of course, uh, that, 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 that's one important thing, but there is also an invisible part of culture, which is the mindsets, right? So how leadership can really shape mindsets uh, and, and, and make sure that Gen Z come with a certain mindset, but how can those mindsets can be leveraged and integrated into uh, a way that is productive, right? So still you need to, you are in a business, right? So you still need to achieve certain goals, but. Uh, how you can do that in a way that also is purposeful and, and you know can leave an impact on the legacy, uh, right? So in the world that we live in, right. And I do think that it starts with you know some people realizing the problem and then trying to solve the issue, and eventually it will snowball into a bigger solution. I'm very hopeful, and that leads into our last question: um, What is the number one advice you would give to Gen Z? Uh, that's that's the the million dollar question right so um um listen uh, there are many things um uh, that that uh, you know you, you you know you can share with with gen z or in general uh, right so to to as, as as a piece of advice but um i would say what, one thing that i i always uh, uh, advise um a younger generation is uh, um uh you know to uh, to be curious uh, to be curious in a way that it doesn't mean just uh, you know to um, um, uh, you know uh, to 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 ask a lot of questions, which of course is 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 part of it, right? So, but it's to be curious in a way that uh, there is an element of being uh, in, in more intentional, uh, right? So, in 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 the journey, meaning uh, 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 not waiting that someone uh, you know will open that door for you, but taking ownership and accountability to go and open that door for you, and sometimes. Uh, you know, mindset could be of just being curious, right? So because chances are nobody will open it for you, right? And you will find it open. You, you, you need to find a way to open that door. And, and you know, the mindset of, the mindset of uh, you know, always keep learning, uh, right? So that humbleness of saying, I don't know it all, but I, I, I want to learn it all, right? So that almost hungry, uh, being hungry for, for, for that, right? So I think it's... One of the elements, one of the advice that I would definitely give to Gen Z, uh, because it, because it changes completely the 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 mindset uh, of of uh, how you do things, right? So, um, it, it, you know, if if you if you really follow this, basically, you end up accepting that there could be failure as part of the journey, but you treat that failure as sort of a, a part of the learnings that that would just make you richer, right? So that, uh, you know, that would allow you at some point in your life to connect the dots across many things or experiences you have been going through, many of the failures you have been going through and, and learn from it, right? So, and keep iterating on it. It's, it's, it's a continuous journey, right? So uh, I think that's important to realize the sooner rather than the later. And, and it shifted also the approaches of how Gen Z could approach work, right? So in terms of being hungry and humble and also people smart at the same time, right? So seeking, connections to people where the, the approach should be building on top of each other rather than just thinking 
uh, you are the smartest person in the in the room and, and you know everybody should listen to you right so you always have to make that a consequence of not just uh, the starting point in my opinion right and that is one for advice um and that actually wrap up wraps up our interview for the day so again thank you to mr croci for joining me today and thank you to everyone who's watched this video i will see you again in the next episode